Today, I'm going to show you a process that I've developed that takes the traditional cyanotype process that normally results in very clean blue and white images, or at least that's what you're trying for, and deliberately introducing moisture, making mistakes, basically doing everything I can so that the final image is nothing like the clean blue and white that is traditional. You have lots of different effects, lots of different colors. Each time you do it, you have no idea how it's gonna turn out. It's always a surprise. So in order to make this process, you're gonna need a few things. So the materials that you're going to need are first, the solution. I use this kit from Jacquard the bottles come already filled with a powder. You just fill them up with water, shake them up, and then when you want to use it, you just pour half and half into a container. Next, plain water. Next, a brush. I like to use a Japanese hake brush. You could also use a foam brush. I find this one coats the paper the most evenly. Paper, I like to use a fairly heavyweight printmaking paper so that when I'm developing the image at the end in a bath of water, it's not going to fall apart. Then, what you're going to use to make your images. So, I'm going to use two transparencies and make two different images. The way I make these is that I will take a photo outside, put it into my computer, and Photoshop it into black and white, high contrast, then print it out on my laser printer. You can buy a pack of 50 transparencies really cheaply on Amazon, and I'll include that link in the show notes. Last but not least, you're gonna need two panes of glass. You can use glass from old picture frames, or you can go to Home Depot and buy window replacement glass, which is relatively inexpensive. And I'll link to where you can buy that in the show notes as well. So first, I'm just gonna take my brush, dip in the solution. As you can see, I've actually already done that. And just paint the emulsion on the paper you know, using nice, broad, easy strokes. You can go over it a couple of times to make sure that the paper is really fully coated. Once I'm done coating the paper, it, the emulsion needs to dry. So I'll take it and put it you know, in a cupboard, any place where light cannot get in. Now that my paper is dry, here comes the fun part. So. I'm going to take my pane of glass and I'm just going to slosh some water on it. Then I'm going to take my paper, place it over that. Now I could go ahead and place the transparency on now, but I'm going to add more moisture to this mix. So I'm going to take the water, slosh it around on the part of the transparency that's going to be in contact with the paper. Take the other pane of glass, place it on top, sandwiching the two, and then I'll take it out and put it in the sun. And I'll leave it out there anywhere from 8 hours to 24 hours, 48 if I get lazy. The idea is to just overexpose the image. These have been in the sun for eh, a little bit under 24 hours. Not really in the sun the whole time, but outside. So now comes the fun part. I'm gonna take off the glass. You can see how they've really changed color. This isn't gonna be the final color, but it's just interesting to see what the color changes at different steps in the process. Now I'm gonna take off the transparencies. 
So this is what it's looking like after we've removed the transparencies. The colors look really cool right now and I wish that I could keep them that way, but they're gonna change sadly when I develop them. Have your water. You're just gonna go ahead and submerge that. Take the other one. We're gonna submerge that one too, making sure they're not stuck together. And they're gonna start developing. The color's gonna start to change. So, as you can see, they're already starting to change color. This was the one where most of the image was black. So this is just where the paper exposed. This one where was the opposite just the image was black and the rest was clear. So we're gonna leave them in here, kinda just, you know, agitating them every once in a bit. And we'll come back to them in a little while and see how, how they're looking. So we've taken the prints out of the water, dried them, and they're pretty interesting. Um, very unexpected colors, um, lighter than I expected but I actually really love them. You know, and that's, that's part of the beauty of the process. You never know what you're going to get. And for some people that might be difficult, but for me, I think it's the most amazing thing in the world. So that's the process. This is the way I do it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope it inspires you to go out and do experiments of your own.